right? So we're going to be moving forward here. ...and running a red light ended poorly for this biker. Fortunately, without any serious injuries. Okay, we'll just let him talk a little bit. So he's doing a U-turn really wide. Didn't need that much room. So we need to practice our U-turns right there. So whenever Motostars talks, we're going to let him talk a little bit. So we, got, uh, we have problems with any vehicles that want to come out. Um, there's no center line. Oh, there it is. And... What do you guys think happened there? Were we paying attention? Were we completely zoned in or zoned out yellow or white stage? Let me know what you guys think could have been the issue there. I don't think we need, I don't think there's any more of that. So we'll just go ahead and go back to that point. Maybe the train tracks did trip them up. Any serious injurious. That's tough. So just based off of that, let's go ahead and take a look a little bit more at the U-turn itself. Fortunately, without any so right here is the moment you can actually start your U-turn. This is the main reason why you practice your U-turn in a parking lot. So you don't fumble it while you're trying to do it with traffic and a bunch of other factors around. You notice the cars everywhere. You have possible pedestrians. You know, you have the train tracks. So you want to be as good as possible out in the parking lot. Do your U-turns. Get them really tight. And then from there, if it, you know, the train tracks mess you up, you still have a pretty dang tight turn. But right here, this is what I want you guys to do. So he does the head look. Now, before you even get to this point, you're already checking, you know, left, right, left, right, left, right, you know, wherever you're at, depending, uh, because, you know, which way traffic comes first. So you already kind of have the traffic situated. You're not moving until you know it's safe to move. So he should have already known it's safe to move. So he's looking right now. It's like, okay, that guy grabbed our attention. That, that uh, vehicle right there might have grabbed our attention. We're a little concerned about that. So... Cool. Right here, we can still straighten it up and apply the brakes if we had to. So this is right here. That is the head movement. I want you to get really far into that head movement. Get in there. Head on the shoulder. Okay? Your chin on the shoulder. Get Seriously, look through the turn. Do that. So this right here is what I want you to have all the way through the turn. You notice how his point, his focal point is like right here. Okay, so you kind of look, you know, you're kind of side-eyeing a little bit. That focal point is right there. That's where I want you to look. I want you to look where you want to go. You don't want to go over here. You don't want to go right here. You don't want to go here. You need to look at this one right here. Look at that spot. Now, what's going to trip him up is you're going to look right again. Anybody else coming? And that's going to shift your body weight a little bit and your shoulders a little bit. Now we're looking where we need to go. So this right here is where we want to go. So let's look right there. Now we got to turn the handlebars too, counterweight a little bit. It's all in your class. We also have it on Motorcycle Training Concepts if you want to check it out. Now, we shouldn't be going this wide. Now, probably a little bit wide because we're like, oh, man, we got a manhole cover. Let's go around it. We should be going this way. You know, we should be already up in here. But that's perfectly fine. That's not what's going to cause the problem. I just wanted to emphasize a little bit of that. I have a big problem with um, being this close to any parked vehicles like this. You never know if any of these vehicles are going to come out. And you can't see anything. So we got line of sight. You also have sun in our eyes. So a factor, an environmental factor, could be the sun blinding us. Now take a look at this right here. We have a huge gap. Okay, we have a huge gap between the vehicles. We have the first. We have a vehicle right here, and then a vehicle right here. What's what's that gap right there? Let's see if I can get it. What's that gap right there? Typically, that's going to be uh, an intersection or a break in the the buildings. So if there's ever a break in the buildings, why is there ever a break? It's to allow vehicles to go in and out or pedestrians to go in and out. So that's putting me in orange stage. So that's the moment we see the side of the vehicle. Okay, that's pretty scary. So what can we do in this situation? We should start applying some clutch and some brake and then trying to stop. We have plenty of stopping distance right here for the speed we're doing. But if we can't, we need to go ahead and swerve. So that's a big thing. So finding your escape paths, maintaining good speed. This is the moment we reacted. it. We need to be more aware, a lot more aware, so we can cut down our perception and reaction time. Because right now, we haven't even applied any brake pressure. Let's see when we apply. Okay, this is the moment we can start our braking distance from here to the car. Not enough room. So in order to, sh to, to increase that braking distance, in, in order to increase it completely, we have to reduce our perception and reaction. So we need to be quicker on finding hazards, and then we need to be quicker on the skill movement of squeezing and then from there, we can have good braking distance. Slowing it down will, will help out your braking distance, but, you know, we waited too long on this one. Maybe we're zoned out. Maybe we got blinded. We don't know. 
but the bad thing is it did end into a crash and with that make sure you wear full gear hopefully it's going to minimize or mitigate any injuries that you have and you're able to walk away from this but you know i don't think he wanted a crash so we can't be causing or saying anything bad about him